big what's up to everybody welcome back to the channel today we are back at it again with another sixers recap slash review video i know y'all love these joints and since the sixers are technically doing well right now i decided why not let's put one together the sixers have yet to lose a game when all of their starters suit up they are 13 and 0 let's keep going with the flow we have a lot to talk about so without further ado let's get into this video so looking at the Sixers as of right now, they are still in first place in the Eastern Conference with an overall record of 17 and seven. They are 1.5 games up on the second seeded Bucks and they are looking to grow their lead as they head into a four game road trip. The picture is starting to weed out the pretenders from the contenders. If you look at it, the Raptors have finally creeped up in the top eight of the conference. Welcome Toronto Raptors fans, we all missed you when the end of the year comes and teams are fighting for for that seventh and eighth seed it is going to get really crazy and unfortunately the Sixers won't be in the mix because they will be atop the conference fighting for a top four seed and speaking of the 76ers statistically in the nba they are top 10 in total points total field goals made field goal percentage as well as rebounding they are second in steals and they are first yes you're hearing this right they are first in the nba in free throws made free throws attempted blocks and personal fouls drawn. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Philadelphia 76ers are legit. Let's look at our last six games for extra context because you already know what we do here. So the first game was against the Los Angeles Lakers on the 27th of January, and this was a home game where we won 106 to 107. It was a good win by all means. There was a little bit of theatrics at the end, but we all know who the Sixers are. They wouldn't be them if they gave up a big lead. <laughs> My main points from this game was Embiid really owned AD. And I mean, throughout their career, every single time that they do play, Embiid does usually win the battle. Um, Tobias might actually be our closer. He definitely shot a clutch, beautiful over the defender shot over Caruso, which I didn't think it, it was going in. I thought the game was done. I, I thought we we're going to give up an insurmountable lead, but we didn't. So it's Tobias, keep on doing what you're doing, my brother. I do believe Tobias should be an all-star. Now, of course, the 76ers probably won't be able to get three all-stars be between Embiid, Simmons, and Toby, but I kind of would give the nod to Tobias just because he has held much of the offensive load. And since the all-star game is mainly a popularity contest and stats are popular, I do think that Tobias should, should get the nod over Ben. Not saying that Ben isn't deserving, but I would definitely take Embiid and Toby. But yeah, as always, the Lakers did come back. They are the Lakers. You expect that. Maybe not to that extent, like melting down where the Sixers melted down the last three three minutes or four or whatever minutes of that quarter, but they are the champions. You gotta love the Sixers unnecessary theatrics at the end of games, but if it makes you feel any better, this game we did in the Lakers 10 game road winning streak. So about them apples lebron definitely did a little baby move trying to hurt and beat but it's all good because we got the w the second game we're looking at is against the minnesota timberwolves this was on the this was on the 29th and where we also won again 118 to 94 this was a blowout win from start to finish toby and joel played well and they were the reasons why we won joel went to work as soon as the game start started putting punches in Minnesota's mouth and Tobias capped off his amazing night with a slam over that boy I forget his name but Toby put in work um the next game was against the Indiana Pacers which was on the 31st and we won um 119 to 110 this was a wild game to say the least the squad was getting killed going into the second up until the fourth quarter where our defensive intensity came up and we put the clamps on them boys from Indiana. The, the biggest lead against us was, was about 20. And with like five minutes left, we implemented the two, three zone with Ben and Matisse as our main guys up front. And that completely stalled um, Indiana's offense because they just couldn't shoot over it. Beautiful game without Joel Embiid, I might add that this was the first game of the season where the Sixers won without their big man, the big all-star MVP candidate. And this is what I call the click game on the road against a team who they usually struggle struggle with because we all know that the Sixers historically always have a hard time playing Indiana. So I believe that that game was the clicky game where the 76ers fully understood their actual strength and know that they were a contender. Those type of games makes teams dangerous. So the next game was against the Charlotte Hornets, where we won, once again, if you peep, there's a constant theme of winning 118 to 111. Joel and B once again, 
killed bulls real quick sidebar let's give appreciation to joel mb i'm definitely going to give him you know more praise but like this is amazing what he's doing right now and it's a privilege for us to watch this on a daily ba basis joel mb gave cody zeller the work this was mainly a blowout until the end where it kind of did get spicy but the Sixers took care of business. The next game was against the Portland Trailblazers, which was at home where we lost 121 to 105. This game was without our big facilitator point forward, Benny one point, and it was a horrible loss in my opinion. I'm not going to overreact to that game because we are first place in the East, but I'm not going to underreact. If we are good, we shouldn't be losing against undermanned teams. When I say undermanned, the Trailblazers did not have Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum or Nurkic in their lineups and we still got blown out at home. The Blazers shot 41.9% on three that game versus the Sixers at 25.9%. Now yes, you can make the argument that the Blazers were hot and the Sixers were not, but the Bulls really think that there was no correlation to this loss with our main wing defender and offensive facilitator sitting out. Coincidence? I think not! Um, another observation that I had on this game was we should have told Joel to sit down after he hyperextended his knee on that play. Um, it didn't look good for a second there, but I just didn't understand why it would still put him in there after we were getting blown out. And we do want to see Joel play through pain because that's going to happen in the playoffs. But um, in that game, it was unnecessary and it could have been something bit bigger than it actually became. So, And in the final game, the one that happened tonight, that I just watched. We beat the Brooklyn Nets 124 to 108. A great win in my opinion. Things really didn't get started until the, the third quarter. That's when we actually built our lead because of Danny Green getting a tech and talking a little smack to Iman Shumpert on the Nets bench. Now, of course, Kyrie nor KD played, but we took care of bit business and that's what we are supposed to do as, as an elite team. Don't try to downplay this one as if it was nothing. We're supposed to win the games that we are supposed to win. The main thing that I saw from this game was we need Danny and Seth to, like, you know, really ball out <laughs> if we're going to beat Brooklyn in a seven game series. Now, I'm right now, I don't see the Sixers beating Brooklyn just because they have three generational, like, you know, scorers who can get on fire in an instant and get a bucket at will. Of course, they don't have the best defense in the world, but in the playoffs, when it's short rotations and the game is, is like more intense and going at a crazier pace, it's going to be hard to stop those three guys. That is a very difficult task, having a complete shootout with them. But we'll see what it looks like as the season progresses. I mean, look, don't get it twisted. It's process till I die, but like, I actually low key like the Brooklyn Nets. Lord have mercy. But getting back on topic, what do all of these wins mean for the 76ers? What are my observations? That is a good question and it shall be answered. First one is that the Sixers are legit and can battle with any team in the NBA. Now we still have some room to grow, especially focus wise, because we always don't know how to close out games, but I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. The cohesiveness, yeah, the cohesiveness, there we go. The cohesiveness is the last puzzle piece to this team. Another thing, I wanna see more blowouts this season like we had back during the 2017, 28 year. And this would give rest to our starters for the playoffs. Number two, the bench is starting to show signs of kinks in their armor. Make no mistakes, we have a fortified bench compared to many of the other squads in the NBA. But upgrades are needed. You already know what I think of the backup four position. Um, we need somebody to back up Tobias, preferably someone who can defend at a average rate and can hit his own shot. And we also need a point guard who can facilitate and shoot off the dribble. Number three, Doc's rotations are beginning to become established and the defined roles are a large factor in the success of this team. And maybe to a fault, we're so perfectly assembled that if one major piece goes down, we're in trouble. <laughs> Mainly Joel and Ben, obviously, but I kind of think if Tobias goes down too, we might be screwed. Along with Shake Milton, don't forget him. Shake is an important piece to that bench. We need God's luck and some reinforcements, which should be coming by the trade deadline or at the very least the buyout market. I very much wanted the team to pick up Derrick Rose for the bench, but it looks like that's not going to happen because he was just traded to the New York Knicks. But hey, what can you do?
for all the Sixer fans who are listening to me, um, wherever you are in Australia, in Philadelphia, in London, the Philippines, anywhere in the U.S., let's take a minute to appreciate what we have right now. We always are worrying about the future and the playoffs um, and how will the team perform then. When that time comes, it will come. There's nothing wrong with enjoying the process of getting there. We are in first place. The same way we hold our teams accountable is the same way we should praise them when they are doing well. And I, for one, on my channel, will give the Sixers their credit. But let me know what you think of the Sixers up to this point in the comments section. Thank you, everybody, for pulling up and listening to a brother think, like, share to a Sixers fiend such as myself, if you feel so inclined, and sub a brother up too. Um, almost at 400 subs thank you again for all the support i appreciate everyone reaching out via instagram i'm truly grateful for everything as the saying goes as always the bulls are mad because the process worked my name is kain and i will see you next